Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has provided insight into the outlook for the system during the high-maintenance summer months. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the prognosis. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Chanel. ESCOM is hoping not to breach stage 4 load shedding during summer after a difficult winter. Yes, you know, the winter was difficult. I know ESCOM has indicated that it was a lot better than they warned it could, could have been, and it was a little bit better than that. But we still had 39 days during that period. So it started in, uh, in April, ended in, in September at stage six load shedding. So we all know what that is like, where we have periods where we have uh, up to 12 hours a day in a day um, without electricity. It's very intense. It's very economically draining. I think uh, it's estimated about a billion rand a day that we lose in the economy every time we enter stage six. So it's, it was a difficult winter and overall I think they mentioned about 153 days uh, I think uh, during that period um, which is just about the whole period. Uh, I know there's about 180 or so days over the, uh, the winter months and I'm sure <laughs> that it was actually more than 153 days but be that as may that's what Eskim says that's what we experienced over the winter period so difficult winter period. Uh, and then we saw signs that things were maybe improving and then we went back into stage six. So there's a lack of trust around whether we are actually exiting uh, load shedding despite all the attention from the National Energy Crisis Committee, the Energy Action Plan, the weekly Sunday briefings from the Minister. You know, it still is a difficult phase uh, that we're in. And we are structurally, I think, in this phase now where we we will have load shedding most days. The prognosis going into summer, there was a lot of concern when Eskom publishes in terms of its uh, requirements uh, from the regulator, a sort of a system, a 52 week outlook. And over the last few weeks, because it basically takes what the system is doing and then sort of projects it forward, it really looked dire for the, the summer period. And then the summer outlook was provided by Eskom this week, which is far less dire. And, you know, stage four would be sort of the worst case scenario on some days. And that all depends now as to how they sustain the uh, or maintain the breakdowns. You know, we know as soon as they go over a certain level, especially around 16,000 megawatts of breakdowns, which is a hell of a lot, we know that we enter sort of stage six to, or stage four to stage six type levels and at points during winter we were closer to the 80 or well, we above the 18,000 megawatts. So I think the base case that Eskom is presenting is that they want to keep unplanned breakdowns to 14,500 megawatts. Now if we look historically that's an horrific figure. I mean in the old days the base case was never above 10,000 megawatts of unplanned breakdowns but we are into, have entered this period now where we've always exceeded that level. If they are able to keep within that window and as they ramp up their summer maintenance, as we know, winter they were doing about 1,500 megawatts on average. They've now ramped up to around 3,000 or just above and they'll peak at around 7,000 uh, megawatts of uh, planned maintenance. That means that they can keep uh, load shedding to below that 4,000 megawatt level, which is the stage four level and uh, we will not have as intense loading as what we experience in some parts, some days in winter. So yes, the prognosis is better for summer than, uh, than it was for winter, but we must realize, you know, with the amount of planned maintenance that is needed, if breakdowns breach that 14,500 megawatt level, we're going to be in difficulties. It is spinning much hope on the return of units at Kusile. Yes, now Kusile, as we know, that's been a big factor during this, this last period, or both summer and winter, uh, since October 23 last year. When the, there's a common chimney, the West Chimney, it has three flues inside there. Um, uh, and within that, the Unit 1 uh, flue had a huge buildup of slurry. We still haven't been told why that was. As that happened, it got so heavy that it, it dislocated and it fell and it actually damaged the other two flues, the, the unit one, uh, two and three flues inside that common chimney. So that meant that Kusile's operating units, there were four, 
uh, three of them were totally out of action. So we've only had Unit 4 operating, and then that went on outage for a while, planned outage for a while. So we actually had no, at some stage, uh, uh, energy coming out of uh, so that Eskom's newest coal-fired power station, most expensive and newest. And what Eskom has done in the interim is, is come up with uh, three temporary stacks. It's controversial, but so instead of uh, finding a, a permanent solution, um, they've gone for temporary stacks because the permanent solution would have, one, required a massive investigation opening up, and then a repair would have taken an, uh, an additional 12 months. So we know it's been 12 months, um, so it's October last year. We're now entering October this year where we haven't had uh, these, this generation. And then it would have been an additional 12 months if we'd gone for the permanent solution. So they went ahead somewhat controversially. And obviously it will be expensive because you have to build the temporary and then eventually bring in the, the, the permanent fix. But that is now just about ready to come on. And uh, that's, uh, that solution will bring on 720 megawatts apiece. So that should help you know, cover the summer period as plants come down for maintenance to have some of that Cassile back or those three units back plus unit four plus unit five just about to be synchronized to the grid. That, that they're putting a lot of store and a lot of faith in that. But as we know with Cassile, you know, <laughs> every time uh, it, uh, you know, it, it seems to get there, there's always some other issue that comes through. Hopefully this time that won't be the case. There will be no reprieve from Kuburg, though. No, nothing from Kuburg because on, we know that we've had this massive extended outage to do the, the steam generator repair replacement. So there's three steam generators at Unit 1 that needed to be replaced to enable the unit to be in a position to apply for an extension to its license to operate for another 20 years. That was supposed to be 180 day maintenance. The plant went down in December last year. So it was supposed to come back around June. Uh, it's now October. We still don't have that unit back. And the best case scenario, I think, currently is 3rd of November that that unit will come back. So we'll get that 900 megawatts back. But almost immediately, unit 2 needs to be taken down for exactly the same. Now, whether it's going to be as protracted um, is, uh, is a big question. But hopefully lessons have been learned um, and that they'll be able to bring unit 2 back much quicker than what we've seen with this Unit 1 uh, really, very, very long outage and do the steam generator replacement. But there's a lot of uncertainties around whether Eskim will be able to get that license in place before July next year, which is its official expiry date. They're desperately trying to separate the Unit 1 and 2 licenses because Unit 2 came on a year and a half in 1985 after Unit um, uh, unit 1. Unit 1 came on in 1984, so they're trying to separate to say, give, give a Unit 2 a bit more reprieve to get all the issues in place to apply for its license. If they don't, and they don't get the license, all those boxes, text and the approval from the regulator, I think we could be in a period where we don't have any Kuba capacity for a period next year. Um, I think there'll be a lot of effort to ensure that's avoided. But uh, definitely, there's a, if they don't get the separation of the license, I don't think Unit 2 will be in a position to have all its uh, accreditations necessary to have the 20-year life extension. So we might have at least one of those. And already, Eskim is preparing to take down Unit 1, which we know have been off uh, for this long maintenance on July as well, for some additional maintenance because they don't have any certainty about the license. So, yes, for summer, Kuburg's not going to be bringing us any reprieve. The decision to return Kusili units early is also not all good news. No, it's, it is, as I mentioned earlier, controversial. And it uh, means that, you know, this was the first plant. These are highly pollutin polluting plants. But this was the first uh, plant that was going to have a, a flue gas desulfurization, so to strip out the sulfur dioxide, which is, is, is harmful to people, animals, and the environment um, in, those, in that uh, uh, surrounding the power station. And you know, this is also in the high fault priority area where we know that Eskom is operating several plants. And there was a Reuters report this week 
saying that there were four plants that are operating outside of their minimum emission standards. So what Kusilia has done is they've asked for a postponement uh, from the minister to uh, comply with the minimum emission standard re relating to sulfur dioxide in particular, and has been granted that by the Minister of Environment, Barbara Creasy, that uh, was granted in June. There was an appeal. So that appeal this week, the determination came out this week that the initial postponement has been granted. So they can theoretically now, once they get the, the atmospheric emission license approval from the Nkala, um district municipality, they can theoretically start unit three using this temporary stack. So from a South African perspective, not maybe living around that area, uh, although I think the prevailing winds affect most of us in Gauteng with the pollution that we get from those in Pumalanga stations, not only Eskom but also Sassel. But, you know, so if we want obviously the electricity as soon as possible. And we know that the costs, as I mentioned, stage six billion rand a day is, is very, very debilitating for the economy that saps confidence when the lights goes out as well. It's uh, undermining investment. So we obviously want that capacity, but it's coming at a cost, and it's coming at an environmental cost. Fortunately, it's with a tight window, so to 2025, mid-2025, that they've got this uh, postponement, but it does come with a cost. And if you add all the, the non-compliance out of uh, Eskom's other plants, we really have a pollution problem, and it's really, I mean, uh, the people that have done these assessments are saying the health impacts are major around asthma, around premature deaths, about preterm births, uh, around animal health uh, as well, because there's a lot of agriculture activity. So it, it comes at a cost, the environmental cost, and I think at some point these sort of noxious trade-offs need to be erring on the side of the environment. At this stage, we're erring on the side of electricity production. The big picture is that this trade-off between clean and cheap used to be there up until about 2015. And then when the electricity, when the renewables costs came down so dramatically, even once you add all the grid stabilization and the flexible generation that you need to back up these variable generators, it's still cheaper than adding new coal. So this is where we have to say the trade-off has been fortunately made technological for us. We just need to now accelerate the addition of much, much needed generation from clean sources, uh, renewable. And the, the, the good news is that it's also the cheapest new generation. We know we need to add a lot of new generation because we have to retire this old coal fleet, which in many ways, as we can see with 14,500 megawatts, you know, optimistic base case of breakdowns is decommissioning itself. It's getting to that point where we have to have replacements. And fortunately, the new replacements are, are not only the cleanest, which is the renewable, the wind and solar, as I say, backed with grid stabilization, backed by flexible generator to keep that stable supply, but um, uh, is also the cheapest now. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.